Hit me with your best shots. Go on and hit me with your best shots. You join me inside the 2022 Volkswagen Golf GTI, the vehicle that defined the hot hatch segment 46 years ago and arguably still defines it. A new generation, therefore, is very exciting for enthusiasts, especially ones like me who previously owned GTIs. I had a Mark V and did all sorts of dumb teenager stuff in it and loved every minute of it. This new one, though, Volkswagen is tweaking the exterior, modernizing the interior, and improving the driving dynamics. We've got to see, however, if this is still the king of hot hatches or if it's going soft. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the 2022 Volkswagen Golf GTI. This one is painted in pure white. It's a non-metallic paint color. Reminds me a ton of my 07 GTI. 14, holy cow, 14 years ago I had that car. I am getting old. The first thing I wanna say about this one right here is that it is a European model. That plate right there up front, yeah, it's not just for show, it actually is a European car. So what I mean by that is that as it's spec, the options you're seeing here do not directly translate to our US spec cars, S trim, SE trims, or Audubon trims. So I can tell you it's 48,000 euros as tested, but that should mean nothing to you because it really, it's like, it's somewhere well within that range, but then with options, some that we don't even get in the US. But we're gonna, you know, we're still gonna do the exterior walk around interior and review. I just want, want that to be clear. So we'll start up here at the front. And this eighth generation GTI has a evolutionary, not revolutionary design. One of the options on this car is that it has their dynamic lighting system. So LED headlights and daytime running lights are standard on the GTI, but this one has the optional IQ light on the ID4, they call it the ID light. But it's this light strip that runs just below the red accent across the grill. And these LED headlights are now adaptive with that package and they're cornering. So like as you turn the wheel, the lights will adapt. The face, we now have this black honeycomb grill that is connected in the front. And we've got a subtle black plastic splitter below that that connects up into this sharp curve right here, that accent that I really like. We also have optional, these five LED lights that are fog lights in the corners on the left and right hand sides that they actually look pretty cool, especially at night. The hood is more steeply raked and has these really hard cut lines in it. Like that design. The vehicle is about an inch longer and sits lower than the predecessor, but the wheelbase is the same length. These wheels, here's an option, right? 19 inch Golf R wheels. So these are not the standard 18s. I think you get standard, yeah, standard 18s that you get on the base S model. They're upgraded and they're wrapped in Bridgestone Potenza RE71R tires. 235 section at all four corners, which is a bit interesting to me because that really speaks to Volkswagen's confidence that they've mitigated understeer because typically with a front wheel drive car, if you want the rear end to kind of rotate a bit more, they do a bit of an offset. So like the Audi RS3 that I drove, I don't know how long ago, that one had an offset, wider front tires, narrower rear, and it really would just rotate the rear end. This one, they're like, nah, we got it. So yeah, you got 235 section, front and rear. Red painted brake calipers are standard on the GTI. That's your, that's your giveaway. Got a GTI badge up here on the side. Bottle matching door mirrors for the caps up top. Integrated corner markers, turn signals. Pinot black gloss B pillar right there. And then stepping back, there's not a lot that's distinctive about the profile of this new generation compared to the predecessor. You can kind of see the steeper rake of the hood there, but that C pillar, that's all classic GTI. Looks great. Getting to the back, we see a distinctive GTI spoiler with these Pinot gloss black pieces down low. 
LED tail lights are standard on the GTI. And the rear view is definitely distinctive for this new generation. The tail light designs are unique. Also look fantastic at night. You see IQ light there on the side. GTI is spelled out with red accent below the Volkswagen badge that also functions as the trunk release. And then down low, we've got a blacked out diffuser with dual chrome exhaust ports. The GTI has never been an ultra flashy car, and especially when painted white, but it looks, it looks sharp. It looks mature as a hatchback. And that is its real distinctive characteristic. And yet when you get behind the wheel, especially as a teenager, me, uh, you can act like a hooligan. So let's check out that interior. On our way in, we'll see we've got keyless entry so you can leave the key in your pocket, pull on the door handle to unlock it, put your finger on that indent right there to lock it. That's just for the front two doors. And yes, it is an option on US spec cars. Oh, one more thing. You can see the Volkswagen printed in here. It's actually not flush. That's like a 3D Volkswagen, cool. Opening up and looking inside, we'll see this GTI has the standard scale paper. That's what they call their plaid design fabric seats. Yet another classic GTI trait, the fabric plaid seats. This one, we've got different textures on the seat inserts, on the bolsters. Then here we switch to suede with red contrast stitching here. They are heated and manually adjustable. So you've got your slider there, your back angle there. Sorry, this is your back angle. This is your raising and lowering. And then this one is your lumbar. So you can slide this forward and you add lumbar that way. It's kind of clever, keeping it manual, but giving you lumbar control. Neato. Here we've got injection molding in the doors. That switches down to this kind of scale design trim that really just blends in if you're not looking too closely at it with the rest of the dashboard and door trim. Moving down into some fabric here. This is a soft feeling plastic. Your window switches. You've got power folding door mirrors here. I've left the car on so we can show you these in action. And they actually tuck up real tight to the body because they go at an upward angle. Someone is definitely not gonna come along and whack those unless they're very close to your car. Down here into hard plastics. And then we've got this soft fabric on the inner side of the door pocket. This doesn't mark it, but up here it does. We've got the Harman Kardon 480 watt nine speaker sound system. That is, I think a standard thing on the SE trim for our US spec cars. And no sunroof. That's a bummer to see, but it does save weight. Let's hop in now. You can close up that door. Good solid sound there. And uncoil those door mirrors. Taking a peek around the cabin. You can see good visibility. And it does get a little dark without a sunroof, especially in the back. But those plaid seats make up for it. They're so cool. Looking at this steering wheel, you do get a standard leather wrapped steering wheel with perforations at nine and three. This one is heated as an option and it just feels fantastic. The thickness is just right. The places at nine and three for your hands to slot in feel so good. And we have steering wheel mounted paddles on the back. This is something that's looked and felt the same since my 07 GTI. I had the DSG and it was new technology and I really wanted to try it out. And yeah, the paddles look and feel the exact same. On the steering wheel itself, we've got GTI down here with that red stripe, this soft metal looking and feeling finish, but it is plastic. And then on this Pinot Gloss back, backing, we've got all these touch sensitive controls. And the ones on the right are gonna work with this 10.25 inch standard digital instrument cluster, very high resolution, super sharp, very responsive, and completely customizable. And the ones on the left are gonna work with VW's IQ Drive. They're suite of driver assistance features that are standard on the GTI. So we've got our lane keep assist, 
turning on and off the cruise control, setting your following distance for the adaptive cruise, and then we've got a volume control here, and it's not a toggle or a, a slider or anything like that. You can just put your finger on here and either press or slide it to increase or decrease the volume. That's better, and I found myself using that more than the fact that the infotainment doesn't have any sort of volume control, so you'd have to just tap your finger here or slide it yet again, which is more of a distraction while you're driving. So I just found myself using this most often as the driver. Above that, we've got our turn signals, which appear on the outer ends of the digital gauge cluster. You, of course, have one touch indications. Wiper controls will be on the right, along with the button for voice commands and steering wheel heating and your seat control that functions the same way as the volume. You can slide or just tap. And then these buttons here, again, working with the gauge cluster. Let's go through those quickly. So if you want a more in-depth walkthrough of this and the infotainment and all the stuff outside and in for the GTI, I would encourage you to watch my walk around video that it will go live tomorrow. But let's go to the right hand side and we can change up your G meter for boost pressure, power, acceleration, all this telemetry data, your audio settings, navigation, driver assist systems, fuel gauge, consumption, all these different things you can choose for both the right icon and the left one. So if you hit the left button, you can change up, you can show you what gear you're in along with what drive mode you're using. And then in the center on this view, we have a lap timer. But if you want to change that with attack going on the outside, if you want to change that up, hit the view button. And those icons right and left stay with you, but now we've got attack on the left and a speedo on the right. Then this is a map view or would be a map view if this was a US spec car. So we've got European mapping data, so we don't have anything that will show up here. Driver assist systems, you can get a full view of that. Speed right in the center there, or back to your lap timer. This is very good. I like this system quite a bit. We have an optional head-up display in this vehicle that'll show your speed, posted speed limit, if this was a US spec car, and your driver assist systems that you're using at that moment. On to the infotainment. This is the upgraded 10-inch display, but you get a standard 8.25-inch display in the GTI. So again, you know, just an amalgamation of different options that we have equipped in this one. And so here, if you want quick access to the climate control settings, you can just tap these, which work pretty darn well. If you want to just slide, you can increase temperature adjustments more readily. This works well, but it's still not as easy to use as just a knob or a dial. So if you're driving, you may want your passenger to adjust these for you. If you don't have a passenger, then just learn this system well before you start driving. You can tap this and bring up the full climate menu or hit the clima, clima, clima button here and you can adjust where the air is going to go. You've got some smart climate settings, air purification, and then going back to climate first setting for a sec. You can increase or decrease your temp here as well and turn on and off your seat heating in one of three stages. I'm going to make sure that goes off because I don't want that on a hot day like today. Back to the main screen of the infotainment. You can drag up and down to get through these different icons. This layout is very user friendly, easy to learn. You can drag this down and you can punch in your home address to quickly go there if you have navigation equipped or turn on and off the start stop system. Drag it back up. You've got radio, telephone, navigation, vehicle settings. We'll go into that one because this one has a lot more going on. Again, if you want the full in-depth, go ahead and watch my walk around video, but this will give you a quick status. If you go to vehicle, you can swipe through these different options. One more, this is gonna be an important setting. Go in, into brakes, and this will be your traction control system, whether you want it on, off, or in sport. So you got that for the exterior and the interior. Going back home, we can get here to background. So you've got a 30 different color ambient light system as standard in the GTI. You can set mood lighting here, or go into individual and program the two different contours of light. So you've got a level up here and a level down here, and that will show both in the front and the back. It looks really cool at night. I'll show you some, some footage of that. And you've got all these different light selections. You can have them be a single color or have this split kind of even or with a little split in the center or top down. So it's, it's cool how you can reconfigure this. Very easy to use. 
a lot of different adjustments to customize the vehicle for you. You can turn on and off which assist systems you want just by clicking it. It's cool how they did this layout so you know exactly what you're turning on and off. Just hit that if I want emergency braking, on a late response, early response, so on and so forth. Easy to use this system. Still wish there were some more button redundancies. And down here you've got your menu selection, parking assistance if you choose to have. This one has parking assist equipped with parking sensors. That's an option on US spec cars. Here are your different drive modes. You've got Eco, one more time. Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Individual. And in Individual, you can hit this icon here and set up your, if you have it, the dynamic chassis control, the uh, basically the adaptive dampers, your steering feel, the drive, the engine response, or the sound, how, uh, how uh, quickly the adaptive cruise control will try to catch up to a gap in traffic. I like that you can adjust that, that's cool. Moving on down here, the buttons I showed you, we have two USB-C ports up there, and this one has the optional wireless smartphone charging. I like this. It looks like it's just eating your phone. Um, give me your phone. I got it. This is that same soft plastic material that's here on the doors. Your engine start-stop button will pulse at you, red, until you actually get in and press the start-stop button in the car. Park button is a button. And then look at this little nugget shifter. So you can have a manual, of course, and I think that would just look better here because this is just so tiny. Just a little guy. You get used to it very quickly, and it's easy to use. Reverse. Here's your backup camera. That's where you turn on the parking assist if you want that. Neutral, just a half click back. Drive. And then if you pull back one more time, you enter Sport Powertrain. Nothing on here changes to indicate that you're in Sport Powertrain. All you do is go from D to an S on the uh, gauge cluster. I wish something else showed you that you were in sport, not just drive. E-brake, pull up on that, and then you do have an auto hold button, thankfully. This slot has a rubberized material on the bottom, maybe to hold your key or just like I did haphazardly throw it in the cup holders where you've got one that'll hold your beverage in tighter or you know maybe it'll fit a bigger bottle, we'll have to see. And then this one is awkwardly shaped back there You've got a DC socket in here. I already showed you the two USB-Cs there. Let's look at the key because this is actually pretty cool. It's got the same kind of black rubberized material as you find here on the steering wheel. So that's on the front with the Volkswagen logo and on the back. And so you can depress it to hit in on your unlock, your lock, and your trunk release. It's got this shiny bordering. It actually feels and looks pretty high end. I like that. In the center console, pretty small here. You see I've got a USB-C cord because though this has wireless Apple CarPlay and we'll have it here in the US, it's not working because the Wi-Fi system isn't working on this European model. So I had to plug it in, but I'll show you some footage of the Apple CarPlay system. It was pretty responsive and did its job. Glove box over here. First of all, we can just check out that the air vents are kind of this continuous line with this brushed plastic finish. Looks cool. Under here, all hard plastic, just like under the steering wheel. Good size glove box in there. No complaints about that. Oh, I didn't mention that the steering wheel is manually adjustable. Let me zoom out real quick. And has a good amount of telescope and tilt. And then looking up, we've got a mild border on this rear view mirror. Your light controls are just touch. That's cool. Your sun visors, very plain. Kind of not great feeling fabric material on the outside of that. You do get an LED vanity light for your mirror and they don't slide. Very unfortunate because that's a big gap there for sun to get through. Grab handles, just hard plastic there. And now let's hop into the back seats and see what we've got going on. Real quick before we look in the back. You can see this one has factory window tint, which looks fantastic with the white paint. I just don't know if it's gonna be an option for US spec cars, I hope it is. Looking in the back, we've got the same scale paper, plaid fabric seats. This is not injection molded like the front, this is hard plastic, and we don't have that trim like the front, the scale designs. We do have the fabric in here, and for the armrests, soft plastic and 
one touch windows that don't go all the way down. Not like an aggressive amount that's still left up, but I wish they did go all the way down. Same solid feel to the door handles, hard plastic down here, soft fabric for the liner on the door pocket. And let's hop in. That's my driving position at six feet tall. You can see I have a good amount of knee room. The foot pockets are nice and tall, so I can slide my feet under real easy. And we've got lots of pockets on the seat back. This one here, your kind of standard one. And then we've got two for perhaps smartphones or even small tablets to fit in there. Third zone of climate control here. That is an option you're only gonna see on Autobahn trim US spec cars. Here it is in kind of this mishmash European model. Two more USB-C ports down there, that's clutch. So we've got four USB-C ports plus wireless smartphone charging. All your passengers will have ways to charge their devices. This is neat. Looking around, plenty of space in the back seat of the GTI. We've got a center console that comes down with cup holders and it's also a center pass-through. We got skis or a snowboard. That's gonna come in handy. And I've got plenty of headroom as well. Very important to fit full-size adults. You just wanna see the middle seat? We'll show it to you. All right, I can fit, even with the headroom. That's impressive. They've done a lot with packaging of people back here. Now let's check out that trunk. Where, as I mentioned, the Volkswagen logo is your release. This also pops up to show you the backup camera. Looking at the trunk, I'll list the cargo space. Fairly generous, it being a hatchback. Backpack for scale. We do have an LED light back here to illuminate what you're doing in the trunk. 12 volt DC socket there. You've got some hooks for your grocery bags on the left and right hand side, along with some latch points there. And here, under here, you will normally find your spare tire. None on this Eurospec model. If you wanted to take off this, ooh, soft feeling cargo cover, you can just by pulling off these and that will really expose all of your available space. And it's also gonna make it a lot easier to reach back here and push down the seats. But it's nice that you can do that. You don't have to go to the side and push down the seats. You can do it from the trunk. Look at all that usable space, the practicality of a hatchback. Gotta love it. Here it shows you where to grab on the tailgate to close it. Very easy to do. Give you a quick peek at the rear with the seats down. Almost flat. Now, before we go drive it, we have two last things to do. And if you know the channel, you know what they are. All right, fine, three. We have to close the door. It's time for the big bottle test. Will it fit in the 22 Volkswagen Golf GTI? Trying the cup holders first. Awkwardly shaped one first. Nope, this one. Oh. Okay, all right, it can move, but it doesn't come out. That counts, that's one spot. Center console, there's junk, but whatever. It's, you can see it's not even close to deep enough to fit a big bottle. We still have one spot, door pocket. What you got for us? Oh, so clean, so clean. Don't even need the door test. Two spots, two spots in the 22 Volkswagen Golf GTI. It's a pass of the big bottle test. And with that, I'll ask that if you've been enjoying the video, please like, comment, and share it. Maybe subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. And now let's go into sport mode and rev it out. Soft limit just below 4,000 and take it for a drive. Now, because we have the seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, we also get launch control. And of course, we're gonna start out by using that. We just need to do some prep first. So let's go to mode, sport. And then as I showed you during the interior walk around, we have to go to vehicle, brakes, and then turn the electronic stability control system off. I wish this was an easier process. Look at all the redundancies. I wish this was easier, 
by just having a button somewhere on the center console that you press and hold to turn that off. But alas, you gotta go through the menu. And now we just go to drive and we'll get up to our staging area. Now the launch is actually pretty simple after you've gone through those steps. You don't have to hit another button or anything like that. You just put your foot hard on that brake pedal, give it gas, it's active, let it build up and go. Fighting for traction. Oh, hesitation. And there it is. Now, that was pretty wild uh, because you get a lot of power going to the front wheels and so it's still fighting for traction just like if you had a rear wheel drive car with tons of power trying to do a launch, it's the same deal. It's not an all wheel drive vehicle. But what was wild about that to me is I'm just remembering my 07 GTI and a hard launch like that. Yes, you didn't have launch control back then, but a hard launch like that, the wheel would have been going nuts with torque steer. And it was just <laughs> dead on. Yes, not having it connected to the front axle is, is the cause for that. But it's just, it's still crazy to me. You could do a hard launch and just keep the wheel perfectly pointed straight. Oh man, pretty cool. So let's talk about that engine. 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder that they cranked up the boost for this new generation, 4.3 bar. So now it makes just over 26 PSI of boost. And that translates to 241 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. That is 13 horsepower more and 17 pound feet of torque more than last year's car. And so therefore, if you do the launch perfectly right, I, you know, I think probably more prep was necessary of getting the tires warm. Then car and driver says you can get to 60 in just 5.1 seconds. Now I'm gonna go and make the ESC in sport mode. So I don't need it off completely as we get into some corners. Oh, that peak torque comes in from just 1400 RPM. And when it builds up, man, this car gets moving. Peak power sets in at 5000 RPM and hangs on until the red line of 6500. Oof. How about that turning radius though? Oh, that required way more of the road surface to turn around than I expected. Back on the power. Now how about this, ooh, the brakes. Nice initial bite, very sharp. Steering light and so accurate this is a variable ratio steering rack so when doing things like this it requires less lock to get the car to turn and I like it this vehicle does have the optional dynamic chassis control to get the adaptive dampers that they've fiddled with even more for this eighth generation and now they respond to changes in the road surface 200 times per second. That's wild to me. And now in their firmest setting, the ride is, yeah, it's firm. They increased the spring rates in addition to fiddling with that DCC. And it, it's, it's taut. That is the word that comes to mind. Very taut over the road surface. But I like this. I like that it's this firm. You feel very connected to the car and it helps the vehicle change direction much more urgently and plantedly. Now how about this seven speed dual clutch? I've just been letting it do its thing in automatic mode and I have zero complaints. The shifts are very quick and it gives me the gear I want immediately. But let's try manual mode. There is no manual mode button on the center console, so you just pull a paddle. Now the difference between this pulling a paddle versus other systems is it'll stay in manual mode 
until you go back to normal drive. Where so many others are just like, yeah, okay, you're done with manual mode if you've not been accelerating hard for a couple seconds. This one, it won't do that. Since the time of my introduction to the DSG transmission in my 07 GTI, I've been impressed with this gearbox and it just keeps getting better. The moment you pull the paddle, it's shifting. There I was going too fast to shift down a second, but that upshift is really quick. Still not quite as quick as like Porsche's PDK system. But for a $30,000 vehicle, this is impressive stuff. And I mean, this car gets moving. 241 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque may not sound like a ton, but when you're only moving 3,100 pounds, it's plenty. This car is 28 pounds lighter than the last generation, thanks to a new aluminum subframe. And while 28 pounds isn't a ton, the fact that you're getting more power and less weight is just a winning combination. And the sound of that engine is raspy, it's strained, and I like it. I like this soundtrack. How much of it is being piped into the cabin? I don't know. I don't really care though. It's good. Now we need to do some really tight, twisty corners. So let's go back to auto in the transmission and focus on changing direction. Now Volkswagen's made a pretty crazy claim with this new GTI and that is that they've effectively eliminated understeer with their electronic limited slip differential in the front. And the reason they can say that, man, this is good. The reason they can say, wee -hoo! The reason they can say that and I can't say anything is because it's a variable electronic limited slip differential. So unlike typical mechanic locking diffs, it doesn't just completely shunk power left to right, like in one movement, which would fiddle in with the, the steering and so it's not gonna behave naturally, neutrally. This one's variable, so it can kind of just usher as much power as needed to the wheel that has the most traction when you need it, and so it's a much more natural feel as the car changes direction, and it doesn't plow the front end. And I mean, from what I just experienced, it definitely doesn't feel like it understeers but more testing is needed. Downhill, real test for the brakes, so good. Turn in, power on, feed it in, oof. Hard again. That's the thing about a front wheel drive car, you really can't do anything too terribly dumb. Not that I'm trying to. Tons of fun, tons of fun. Going back to manual mode because I want that control. Holy cow. I mean, they make the claim and they stand up to it. Do not feel understeer from this hot hatchback which is just a character trait of these cars, typically. I just feel movement, momentum. I really want to do this all day. The brakes, the steering, the power, it's fantastic. Now let's go back to auto mode and then move into something more subdued like comfort. This will be a good test for that DCC. How do the dampers feel when it's supposed to be comfortable? And this is a fairly smooth road, so they're getting the benefit of that. 
but even on a smooth surface like this, you can feel the car remains tight. <laughs> It remains tight. You can feel the ripples in the road still in comfort mode. And while even in sport it was never truly harsh, it's even less so in comfort. Let's just see. Let's go for some lane markings. Yeah, you can hear them. You can feel the bumps. But they're definitely not punishing. It's a good suspension system. And the throttle tip in has eased up quite a bit here in comfort mode. The steering, much more loose, yet, yet still precise. And the cabin insulation is about what I'd expect at this price point. There's some wind noise on these 19 inch wheels. There's some road noise, but it's totally fine. That's kind of the Volkswagen thing. That's their angle with the GTI. It's like, hey, we know we've got competitors, but ours is, is German, it's, it's built better, they say. And you know what? It feels pretty darn solid to me. And speaking of solid, speaking of smooth, that's where you can make a case for the DSG gearbox. Because I'm the kind of person that always wants to say, go get the manual transmission. But I haven't driven the new one. My last experience with the GTI's manual uh, for this last generation, the Mark 7, was not thrilling. It, it felt something like a slush box. And so well, yes, there's that extra point of engagement with a manual, unless it's really pulling you into the driving experience, I say, why not get a fantastic seven speed like this one? Yeah, it's gonna cost you an extra 800 bucks, but it doesn't really rob you of the thrills of driving the GTI because it's so good. I wanna reference the fact that the GTI comes standard with all the active safety features that I mentioned in the interior walk around and they're all fantastic. I had a good amount of time on highways to test out the adaptive cruise control, the lane keep system, what they call travel assist, and it worked flawlessly. One, you can keep your hands off the wheel for like, what, like 30 seconds I was exp experiencing, but it's perfectly centered in the lane, and the adaptive cruise is not abrupt. As I mentioned, you can set how quickly it wants to catch up to cars in front of it. It's just a really well-sorted system, and the fact that it's a standard feature is pretty darn nice. That and having blind spot monitoring of your cross traffic and all those other good good safety features as standard is a real asset at this price point. What is that price point? So the GTI is gonna come in base level S trim at $30,500 here to the US by the end of this year. If you want a well-equipped SE model, that's gonna be off $35,000. And the Audubon trim, the full range topping one, is gonna be just under $39,000. So nowhere near, you know, the European estimate I was giving you for this car of what, 48,000? Told you it's not a direct tra translation. So here in the US, those are gonna be our price points. I didn't mention the fuel economy for this vehicle and I've been watching the fuel gauge just completely diminish as I've been driving it aggressively. But the fuel economy is actually not that bad. Not as much as this would suggest. Uh, it's 24 city, 32 highway, and 30 combined. Let's, uh, 28 combined, I apologize. Let's compare that to what we get in vehicles like the Hyundai Veloster N. That's probably gonna be the most direct rival to the GTI as it currently stands. That car starts at 33,250 for the dual clutch in that one. It's going to make 275 horsepower. It will get to 60 a bit quicker than this, 4.8 seconds. Tops out at the same 155 miles per hour and it gets just 20 combined MPG. 22 combined MPG. Then we have a duo from Honda. You've got the Honda Civic SI if you're on a budget, that's 26,000. Makes 205 horsepower, gets to 60, much slower at 6.3 seconds. And the fuel economy for that one is great. It's like 30 combined MPG. Then we have the Honda Civic Type R. That one, if you got a little more cash at $38,000, it's the most expensive car we'll discuss here, but it also makes the most power at 306 horsepower, gets to 60 almost as quick as the uh, Hyundai Veloster N at 4.9 seconds, I believe. And the top speed is the highest at 169 miles per hour. The fuel economy, can't remember off the top of my head. We'll be sure to have that in the specs. And then there is a sedan, just like the Honda Civic Si. It's the Subaru WRX, and that is going to start at $28,000. It'll make 
268 horsepower. It'll get to 60 in 5.2 seconds, so just a bit slower than the GTI. And the top speed is 144 miles per hour, so lower. Which of these vehicles do I think you should buy? The answer to that question really comes down to two things, budget and body style. Actually, I guess both go together because if you're limited by budget to $30,000, it's the SI or the WRX. And if you like the sedan body style, it's one of those two as well. The SI for 26 Rand is a heck of a car. It's so much fun to drive. I like how it looks. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the new generation Civic sedan is gonna look like with the SI treatment. The Subaru WRX, the performance for the money, 28 grand and getting that much power and that quick of acceleration and the confidence of the all-wheel drive system is also a heck of a bargain. If you're not committed to that body style or if you're not locked into that budget, it's the GTI, Gloucester N, or the Civic Type R. To address the most expensive first, the Civic Type R, manual only, such a fun car to drive. I had a chance to throttle it on track and it did not disappoint, but you have to get over the way it looks. Maybe the new generation is gonna look more comely, more mature, but this one, as it currently sits, is a boy racer, which is fun, but not if you have to go to a business meeting or, or anything where people have to really respect you. The Veloster and yet another one I had a chance to really wrangle on track, and Albert Bierman, ex-BMW M development head, his engineering prowess really shined through on that car. They did their homework, and it delivered in a performance environment. I felt like it was actually kind of too stiff to drive on the road, however, and something about the three-door formula and it's just, I mean, lack of inherent practicality as a daily driver kind of niggled me a little bit. And the fact that it's three grand more to start than the GTI. The GTI, this new one, looks fantastic outside and in. I, I have some issues with the infotainment it's too sensitive, I want more physical controls. I want a physical control for the ESC and uh, I would like something a bit more substantial for my drive selector. But those issues aside, I have effectively no complaints when it comes to this car's performance. It really thrills. And at 30 grand to start, it's a little more expensive than the WRX, but it, <laughs> I think it's worth it, I really do. The added practicality, I love the hot hat shape and formula. I'm impressed by this car. And I hope you guys are too, and I hope you enjoyed this in-depth review. And until next time, I'm, I'm going to a stoplight, come on. Again, really? Really? Wait, sport mode. Wait, three, two, one, until next time, accelerate. See you guys later.